Hello, everyone. Welcome to Novel Tea Show, where we spill the tea on the truth about publishing. I should know our spiel by now, but welcome. We talk about writing and publishing. And today's episode is really special. We're trying something different. We're doing our first ever live critique and we're doing first pages. So the first 250 words of people's novels. We had our Patreon submit their first pages to us. So we have a bunch of those and we're just gonna kind of read them live and react to them, talk about kind of what our impressions are, how a, an agent might respond to a first page. And we'll talk generally about openings for novels. We have some questions about first lines and we might even share our first pages. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now who, so do we who just, are we? Did you did you do an intro intro? Like who are you? Oh, that's a good point. I'm yeah. Alexa. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alexa Dunn. Uh, I'm a YA author. Oh. I have a YouTube channel. I write YA science fiction and thrillers. And my echo's about to go off. It didn't talk. Good. Okay. <laughs> it lit up though. <laughs> she, she was ready. <laughs> she is always ready. <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll go next. Hi, I'm Kat. Uh, my channel is Katie Tastic, where I occasionally make videos about books and writing. I'm, I'm excited about first pages, but I, I love a good first line. I feel like first pages are a little uh, like nebulous, kind of like first lines really stand out, and first chapters, like more mm -hmm. of like a longer opening. A first page is it's an interesting amount of space to work with, so I'm excited well, to get. And yet it's it's a critical space to work with because some agents will and readers will literally only read a page. It's it's kind of unfair, honestly. Yeah. And yet it's the way it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not that kind of reader, so that's why it's oh it's I am amazing yes. for me. Yeah. Lainey, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> My name is Lainey and I have the channel Ginger Reads Lainey. And I talk about books and writing on my channel. I'm trying to get pr traditionally published, currently working on my novel. So that's me. I'm also kind of like Kat. I don't need the first page to wow me to read the rest of the chapter. Um, but I know how important they are. And I feel like my personal writing, my first chapters always change from draft to draft. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not like ride or die for me with first pages if I might read something, but it can convince me not to read something, if that makes sense. So if it's like even halfway decent, I'll read a bit further before I make decisions. But if it's bad, that'll stop me. I can usually tell on a first page, as can agents, if someone doesn't have, like, doesn't have it. Clunky writing, um, starting in the wrong place, et cetera, which we're gonna talk about. <laughs> Especially stands out more in the first page because in general that is one of the sections of the book that has been polished the most. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if that first page is uh, kind of rough, then yeah. that is a pretty clear indication that the other parts of the book might be rough too. Well, you know a lot about their editing skills. Mm -hmm. if, if this is their best foot forward, what does that mean for the rest of the book? It means the writer still has a long way to go in terms of learning their, their kind of writing craft and editing skills. Yeah. All right. So, okay. What are we going to start with? Yeah, so I think we're just going to dive in. So Lainey is going to share her screen. Okay. We have these in, I, she, she's, we're real nervous because we've never yeah. done this before. Um, so we have the pages in a folder and we're going to just like read them. And while Lainey clicks over to that, we have a question that is worth jumping into. How do we feel about prologues? So first of all, when you submit to an agent, if you have a prologue, that is what you have to submit as your first pages because it's the start of your book. Mm -hmm. um, I can go either way about prologues. I think that when they work, they work. And when they don't, they don't. Yeah, I don't have any strong feelings one way or another. Like. I, I guess I don't have any negative feelings about a mm. prologue. Um, mm -hmm. Like a, an individual prologue could be bad, but in general, I'm just like prologue, no prologue. It's just what you're calling the first chapter, first section yep. of your book. Like it doesn't yep. really matter. Though of course, often prologues do break format. Like they're a prologue because they are kind of separate from the start of the book. And 
I'd say they're most acceptable in fantasy. They work most often in fantasy. Um, though actually thrillers, uh, I've seen some thrillers really pull off a good prologue, even if they don't call it a prologue, if they call it chapter one. It's like that first chapter from a different POV with some mysterious stuff in it. Um, it really depends on your book. But I do caution writers not to default to a prologue. I think that's a novice writing mistake. We've all been there because it is often or can be used as a narrative cheat when you're newer to writing. Like you want to shoehorn something into the book. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's why agents and editors say no to prologues. It's not really a hard and fast rule. It's it's a way to weed out novice writing or to caution yeah. novice writers. Another sort of um, hazard of prologues is it can be a place to just info dump. You, exactly. You know, the author can be like, well, you know, before the reader can actually start at chapter one, they need a history lesson on the world of this, on this fantasy world. Um, and <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, yeah, so often they're in third person, even if the rest of the book is in first person. And, and it is, it's an info dump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also find that um, prologues, uh, just by critiquing other people's work, like the more they know the story, the less the prologue really is needed. I mm -hmm. think it was just kind of there for them to like help them jumpstart the yeah. novel. Yeah, and, a lot of yeah. prologues are um, a, a very like early draft symptom of like the author telling themselves the story still, and yeah. like they're still trying to figure out like what's important, what matters, what information do we need. Okay. I'll tell you one exception that really stands out for me though. Um, I think the prologues in Shadow and Bone in Lita Bardugo's mm -hmm. books worked really well. Mm -hmm. Cat, you're smiling. I I have some feelings about those where I like them. <laughs> no, I, I, it's not that I didn't dislike them. It's that I'm very upset at myself that I didn't like predict the outcome of the trilogy as a whole because of those prologues from the very beginning. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys have you guys have read the series, if you're from, you'd be familiar with what I'm yeah. talking cough, about. Cough, cough. <laughs> says the girl who did not get through book two. <laughs> <laughs> Well, something I don't. This is no shade to you, Lainey. I don't like pirate books in the sense that I don't like books where the majority of the story is on a boat because I don't like quest novels, which is a personal thing. And they end up on a boat, and I was like, I just lost the will to read. And I know that makes me a terrible person, and I know that I should go back and finish. So it's a good one. Yeah, I, I know. Do. It's See, like to me, like the like obviously, well, no sh like no shade to other pirate books, but like <laughs> mine didn't didn't have that much like which is on, then that's on good. The, oh, yeah, <laughs> I will have no problem reading it, Lainey. Also, I, I say that, and like the one book that was a huge exception for me, as we just go on tangents, um, I was so surprised by um, Truth Witch for this reason, because she hit me in the face with a boat journey in Act Two, and I totally didn't hate it. I actually quite enjoyed it, but it was an exception I, for me. I haven't read that book, but was there a lot of like relationship building? Cause I feel like that- Yes, it is a yes. character driven novel. And, and that's why like those like yeah. travel stories like benefit from like really yeah. digging in deep with like a character relationship yeah. and building and stuff like that. Well, and my CP Ellie Blake also did that in her second book, Fireblood, but it was a second book where character relationships were established and it was only a small chunk of act one into act two. It wasn't the whole book, so. But my issues with quest novels is a subject for another day. <laughs> um, why don't we dive in? Okay. So and if anyone if, has a prologue, we still love you. We yeah. won't judge you. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna share the screen. Okay. All right, what are we gonna start with? Maybe work our way from the bottom up? Um. Okay, I'm gonna click on myself, so it's only that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at look at the mirror screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here we are. Okay. Where should we start first? Or, or can anybody in like the comments say that like if I don't can know, you if Kat and Alexa show up or something? I'm looking at it. Um, the play, the like feedback. So it's a little bit delayed, but it looks like we're there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I. I. Same. Okay. We did okay. it, guys. <laughs> Are you proud? <laughs> I say we start from the bottom up because it's just easy to do. So we start with yours? No, no. Uh, the bottom. Oh my, oh, my screen is sorted by last modified. See? Oh, okay. okay. We, we have different things. Should we start with examples of good or should we start 
with critiques or with ours? I say we start with, see guys, we planned. Um, yeah. <laughs> I would say we start with critiques. But, okay. Or, and we can maybe even like, maybe not do them in a row, like jump, like spr sprinkle things in. Okay. So, well, I saw Elaine in the chat, so let's start with hers. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I put the genre up here at the top. So hers is an adult urban gothic. Cool. And is there a way that we can full screen this or no? I don't know. <laughs> oh, full screen. Did that work? It looks like it did. Okay. So are we reading these out loud or are we... Uh, it worked well enough. Um, yeah, let's read it aloud. P uh, live chat people, you can also tell us your, your preferences. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does someone want to volunteer to read it out loud? I can do it. And okay. um, someone in the comments said they're brave to have their name attached to it. When we posted this to our Patreon, we said... Your name will be attached to it unless you don't want it to be. So we, we care. Um, <laughs> all right. So we're not going to be mean. Like, yeah. we're, we're not jerks. This, this is is place. I mean, sharing your work is scary in general um, and getting feedback. But yeah, we're, we're doing this uh, as a fun sort of discussion thing. So yeah. Okay, my reflection stands beside her as I watch through the window. It's an image unseen in many years. She knows I'm here, her narcissism is showing. Sitting at her vanity, she brushes the age from the thick waves of hair that fall to her hips, silver to gold. With a few more strokes, the metallic white is brushed away and replaced with the only sunshine I can bear. The chill of autumn night fogs the window with the contrasting heat introduced by my presence and obstructs my view. Her petite figure is still viewable through the soft, dreamy aesthetic as if I am watching her in an old Hollywood film. A little Vaseline on the lens to make my actress glow as she dances around a dim lit bedroom. Her youth steadily returning as she moves. A hand wrinkled with time reaches into a closet to hang the drab dress worn during the day and is replaced with a youthful porcelain-like hand retrieving a gleaming white silk nightgown with inset flowers on the bust and lace trim. Her gait is bewitching as she glides around the room as if on air. I catch a shimmer in her eyes and a sly smirk appears as she gets a glimpse of her returned beauty in a mirror. She lays the nightgown on the bed, smoothing the silk before returning to her seat. She looks to her left hand and with eyes closed tight, removes a plain gold wedding ring. Is That is the first page, right? Yeah, yeah that's okay. The first page. I was reading on your screen instead of the actual screen. So, all right, what do you guys think? So we know this is an adult urban fantasy and I can definitely feel that yes. in a good way. Yeah, in a good way. It kind of reminds me of Gillian Flynn's Sharp Objects, like that Ooh. whole like atmospheric tonal, and it's narrative. gothic. So that makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and that's the thing. I like the hint of magic. This is so something I feel about first pages. It's not always true, but I feel that a good first page delivers on the promise of the premise. Whatever the premise of your novel is, there should be a hint of that on the first page. In this case, this is a gothic. I feel it. It's right mm -hmm. there. This is delivering on the genre and the expectation. And of course, an agent would be reading this following a query um, or a reader would be reading this following back cover copy, usually. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of questions. I wanna know who this person is. I'm intrigued by this magic. I wanna know how it works. Um, and I wanna, I, I'm definitely curious as to where this leads. So I would read on. Yeah, same. I, I would definitely read on. I, I have a lot of questions about who the narrator is and like yes. the relationship because it, it's told in first person but mm -hmm. the narrator is like looking at this woman um, yeah voyeurism yeah. I, I have a lot of questions about just like wanting to know more kind of stuff yeah yeah there's a lot of like really great words that are jumping out at me too like um narcissism i really like you know autumn kind of putting that the weather outside kind yeah. of vibe um the colors silver to gold i really like and then also old Hollywood film 
Yeah. Really I mean, the kind of lean on the lens. I love that. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good really detail. good description. And that's the thing. I mean, I can see all of this. It's it's specific detail, which generally is advisable. Like this, there's this is being shown to me. Is what I mean. I can visualize the whole scene. A uh, question we have in the chat. Do you think evoking a question for the reader is important on the first page? Yeah. Think, yeah. Why not? <laughs> I, I think that question can just be like, what happens next? Yeah. Like, yeah. Going kind of thing. Well, and for me, it's the magic. Mystery. So, yeah. And for you, it's who, who is the narrator? Ooh. So I, I, yeah, I, I'd say in general, not that you can literally leave someone with a question on every page, but to get people to turn pages, there should always be some sort of question, even if it's what happens next. Mm -hmm. Elaine, since you're in the chat, do you have like anything you want us to like talk about? Um, I did notice someone said they wanted us to zoom in. Not sure how to do that. <laughs> percentage of like how much you're viewing of like does it does it have that up at the top it, have like a hundred percent of the not there. right right here no no oh, oh, yes yeah I don't know. Your screen yeah is. hey there you go we're learning guys thank you we'll do that is that tell me if that's enough in the chat if it's not i'll make it yeah. bigger <laughs> okay so do we want to jump to maybe one of our pages or one of the famous published books pages briefly? Yeah. yeah. I'll keep hers up unless if she has a question, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh, well, we're happy to talk about it. It's a good first page. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's atmospheric. That's what, that's the word I was grasping for. And, yeah. and I'd say that's another thing that your first page should do. It should give a very good idea of the tone mm -hmm. of your book. Um, again, that's a promise of the premise thing. Like, what does this book have in store? Your first page should have some hint of that. Even honestly, if it's just, I write well. That can also be a promise on the premise in some cases. Because yeah. <laughs> I do think it's fair to point out some books have quote unquote mundane openings, like meaning their first page isn't going to become famous, but it does its job. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, you don't always have to be reinventing the wheel when it comes to your first page, um, but it, it needs to be competent. Yeah. And actually, um, why don't we look at the Hunger Games first page? Because it brings up, I think it's kind of hilarious because it does what you're not supposed to do because it opens on a cliche. And I'm fascinated by that, but it I feel that it works. Or maybe, I haven't read it in a while, while this book so let's talk about okay it. <laughs> we might have to really zoom on this one. uh who, who wants to read it not it i just i just went okay i, I guess i can okay i'm cruel i'm so sorry i love you um, does that look good probably yeah i can i can see it <laughs> okay <clears throat> hold on let me get a drink of water <laughs> okay when I wake up, the other side of the bed is cold. My fingers stretch out, seeking Prim's warmth, warmth, but finding only the rough canvas cover of the mattress. She must have had bad dreams and climbed in with our mother. Of course, she did. This is the day of the reaping. I prop myself up on one elbow. There's enough light in the bedroom to see, see them. My little sister Prim curled up on her side, cocooned in my mother's body, their cheeks pressed together. In sleep, my mother looks younger, still worn, but not so beaten down. Prim's face is as fresh as a raindrop, as lovely as the primrose for which she was named. My mother was very beautiful once too, or so they tell me. Sitting at Prim's knees, guarding her, is the world's ugliest cat. Mashed in nose, half of one ear missing, eyes the color of rotten squash. Prim named him Buttercup, insisting that his muddy yellow coat match the bright flower. He hates me, or at least distrusts me. Even though it was years ago, I think he still remembers how I tried to drown him in a bucket when Prim brought him home. Scrawny kitten, belly swollen with worms, crawling with fleas. The last thing I needed was another mouth to feed. 
but Prim begged so hard, cried even. I had to let him stay. It turned out okay. My mother got rid of the vermin, and he's a born mouser. Team cat, uh, for sure. <laughs> Team buttercup. No, I, I. what I love about this first page, well, first of all, you can tell automatically that Suzanne Collin is gifted with words. Like, what I love about The Hunger Games is that it defies so many expectations for me. Like, I usually, at least when I read it for the first time, I didn't like first person present tense. And then, like, she nails it. It's full of detail and personality. And the writing is crisp and pretty at the same time. And what I like about this first page is it's a huge cliche. A character waking up and observing her surroundings. But this first page does so much character and world work you're like wtf like wh where where does where do they live and of course mm -hmm. if you're picking up hunger games you know it's dystopian so part of the promise of the premise is what makes this dystopian how mess up is it on the first page yeah we do what a yeah. little hint of the mystery of like of course this is the day of the reaping yes mm -hmm. exactly oh, okay what are they reaping um you know it raises enough questions it also illustrates Katniss's character in that yeah. paragraph talking about how she reacted to um, Buttercup, the cat. Yeah. This mm -hmm. was actually the first time I read this, um, I only read like the first chapter and then I put the book down for a long time and didn't pick it up for a while. Cause you're um, like, it's a cat murderer. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> this is the opposite of save the cat. Katniss tried to kill the cat. Like yeah. what's happening? Um, yeah, this would always, the, the last thing I needed was another mouth to feed. That always stuck out to me. Cause I'm like, yeah. Why is she like? Is she the only one that's like getting food for her family? Why exactly. is that? Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, mean it doesn't I just her father at all, but it mm -hmm. mentioned like my mother. She's tired and worn down, and you know she's beautiful, or at least that's what they tell me. So yeah. that almost tells you right there, like her dad's not around. Like yeah. he's probably been dead for a while. Mm -hmm. um, she doesn't remember her mother being any other way, but like tired and heartbroken. There's just so much at work on a single page mm -hmm. and a good first page can do this. But I think that the danger here is that Suzanne Collins is a pro and she did a really good job at this, but you do have to be careful when you're thinking about an opening like this. Essentially, this is a character observing and navel gazing and that can actually also be boring. It really depends on the execution and whether it fits into your story. Not every story is gonna work with this kind of exposition on, on page one. And, and whether it means anything, um, you know, this first page taken as just this first page, we don't really know what's going on. There's barely any hint of conflict there. But after reading the book, after seeing more of the series, like after we know how much Katniss cares about Prim, Prim is yeah. fulfilled. Like, so of course the first sentence is going to be about Prim. Um, yeah. like, after reading the book, like the first page is just all the more richer for it. Which really plays into the beat sheet, the the Blake Snyder beat sheet, opening image, closing image, mm -hmm. which I don't religiously subscribe to in novels. I think it's a lot harder in novels and much easier in screenplays because it's a literal opening image. But it's it's this it's the same idea that thematically um it's all about Prim. It's all about this this one connection and what you will do for the person that you love most in the world. Mm -hmm. And also what I like about the first page is that it, it uh, inadvertently, like you don't even realize it yet, this is setting up the stakes for the inciting incident, which is Prim being chosen at the reaping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's making you care about this little sister that's gonna... And possibly not care about Katniss because she tried to murder a cat. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's part of her character she I, I think that another thing that comes up in, in beginnings and first pages is that you have to care about the main character about the pov main character except the pin that i like to put in that in is they don't always have to be relatable mm. you just have to kind of understand who they are within the context of the story and you have to find something to kind of hang your hat on in terms of wanting to read about them. And I think in Katniss's case, as rough as she is, and she has a lot of qualities that are a big turn off to the average reader, her caring so much about her family or even like Gail is how, is like your window into her as a character. Yeah. 
I know that gets me on the first page, but we're, we're just as much talking about first chapters, essentially. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Are we done well, with the other games? Yes, that sounded really petulant, Lainey. Are you are you upset that I always bring everything back to the Hunger Games? No, no, I love the Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, it's it's like I'm like a rusted out like car. I only do Hunger Games examples in my craft videos because it's really it's, easy to. Yeah, it's, and it's mostly I've read it so many times that I can I know I'm actually remembering it accurately because otherwise, like I don't remember half the books I've read. It's real sad. But also structurally, it, it, it does almost everything right. So, mm -hmm. okie dokie. Let's do another submitted page. Okay. Dealer's choice. Lainey, you pick. Okay. Well, I guess we can do Claire's. All right. Did I read this one? Yeah. This is a YA fantasy. Let me open it up on the um, and the name is... Um, because I think it's also helpful to know names, and so we know them because they were submitted. The name of this one is The Price of a Crown. Um, because yep. an agent will essentially see a title and then read a query, of course, and then first page. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh so why fantasy chapter one, Ebb. With wisdom and humility, I hold myself up, raising my shoulders without bunching them with kindness and strength. My lips are dry. I fight the urge to wet them until I am welcomed home to death. The words fall on the silence around me, then applause. I bow to the empty room. The call of the gulls outside is the only applause I'll get till the coronation. Every day brings it closer, less than a fortnight till I become Tatiana, queen of Elodire. Nervous energy burns through me. The silver bell beside my bed has a commanding call no matter how delicately I ring it. As princess, I could get away with preparing myself in the morning. Now, with my coronation so close, well, it just wouldn't be proper. Eventually, it won't bother me. Staff are a part of my life. There's only a moment of silence before the doors open. My ladies-in-waiting and handmaidens have this routine down to an art. The only delay is choosing which dress for the day. Perhaps a deep green, the favorite of a marquise whose favor I need. A blue and silver dress, the nation's colors, my eyes flick to the simple white morning dress and my lady, Helen, goes to grab it. The eyes of the handmaidens turn to me. My ladies in waiting are childhood friends, but my handmaidens are sisters and cousins of the Privy Council. Anxiety flutters in my chest. I think it's a good first page. Mm -hmm. There's a lot there. Um, I will say my first impression just of those first few lines I was a little confused at first with the quote marks because I wasn't sure who was speaking. And personally, this is a personal thing from a formatting perspective, I would italicize those without quotes. If it, if this were my opening, especially as I understand, this is basically like her reciting the ceremony that's gonna be happening in her mind. This is like, it's not real, it's not actually happening, if that makes sense. Yeah. And to that end, I, I like that as an opening because it, it it's very pensive, this mm -hmm. opening. It's a princess who clearly ha is full of dread in a, in a, in a way, which I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of anticipation in this opening page of like, you know, she's preparing and she's building to something. Um, I really agree with uh, Alexa's note. Um, Cause I, I like the beginning with the, the quotes and like she's rehearsing her way through this. Um, but I, th I think the italics is a good idea. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing too. I also like how there's like this slow build to something mm -hmm. and I don't exactly know what, all right, well, I guess it's the, when she becomes queen, but also why, like, how is the monarchy working in this kind of situation? Like, yeah. did someone die to her to become queen? Is she marrying mm -hmm. someone to become a queen? I someone who's favor she needs, like what's yeah. going on there. I mean, I love the dress thing because it's a great, there's world building in there but also backstory that's being hinted at, but it's being hinted at and not spoon fed, which is actually one of my favorite things to do, or I should say one of my pet peeves in opening chapters, let alone first pages is info dumping. I mean, no one likes it. Um, and I think that's a very deft hand. That's a very good way to do it. Cause I, we have these, exactly. We have these questions. Plus we know the colors of her, her nation. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. a great way to deliver world building, like yeah. Yeah. in the colors of the dress, and also setting up tone and atmosphere. Like this is a, a royal story, and you know there might yep. be more emphasis on dresses later. You know there might be a ball or something. Like it sets up expectations and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm really like curious about this. Well, and also this is a little detail, but I like the chapter heading, like it's a little bit mysterious, ebb. Like, yeah. ooh, okay. I don't know if that was a mistake or not, so I just copied the way that it was sent to us. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think yeah. that's intentional. And, and that's like a stylistic and everything. choice. Mm-hmm. I like it. Um, other thoughts? I also yeah, like yeah. the reflections on the staff. It tells you about yeah. the class setup. Um, and I, I also, this is a small detail, but I liked the that the silver bell has a commanding call no matter how delicately I ring it. That really hints at her reluctance, which is a character detail that I think is very good. Yeah, and I was just thinking of this again, how the nation's colors, um, she didn't say my nation's colors. So I'm yeah. like, yeah, really curious about, you know, what her situation is. Oh, yeah, is. like, oh, that, you know what that automatically makes me think of, Lainey? It makes me think of, like, a Catherine the Great type situation where she's married a prince and he's died and she's becoming queen. I just, like, imagined, like, a whole plot. It's fine. <laughs> it might be. You don't know. <laughs> no, and that's that's the thing. Um, like, your specific word choices really make an impact. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because it's a white morning dress. Yeah, which so, is yeah. interesting. Like someone a wedding dress. Died. Yeah, but someone's died, I think, right? Yeah. Ooh, I'm curious now. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually like, hey, Claire, like, we'd like to know more about this book. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this is really what a first page should do. And and we only know that it's a YA fantasy and the title. Um, mm-hmm. and, and we're intrigued. It's a great example that a page with no context can do that. Yeah. Okay. And and I think that this speaks to it's it, this is a good point to talk about choices for opening scenes. I think a lot of people struggle with this. Um what you choose for your opening scene definitely matters. It it you want to pick something that does a lot of work and I think this does. This is doing character work and world building work and ideally that's what you want an opening scene to do. Definitely. Mm-hmm. All right. Do we want to jump into another one? Sure. Let's do another submitted one. Okay. Sounds good. Let's Let's do do Laura Nettles. Okay. Just because it's in front of my face. And I think it's my turn to read. So this one is a YA paranormal slash sci-fi. Okay. I lay on the ground, digging my fingers into the soil as I gaze up at the bioluminescence naturally swirling on the vaulted shell interior. The best view is here in the agricultural spiral where even more colors are created from spores of plants and the trails of tiny creatures native to Atua. They mix in supernovas and constellation patterns mom and I name together. Moa, the sacred birds, Olifes, the cuttlefish, Alai Tu, the god who stands, and many more. Purples, oranges, reds, blues, and a small smattering of yellows bridge the past to the present. From the time of my family to the time of my apprenticeship. The visual cacophony fades out, revealing the mother of pearl sheen that is our world, as the lighting along the ceiling slowly gains intensity, signaling a new day. The dancing lights of the firebugs and glow beetles as well as the large glowing leaves of the spirit trees diminish. The world become more mundane. I wish the algae painted cosmos would never fade. Rising from the soil, I shake the loose dirt off my bound wild hair and start to run barefoot through the different spirals of our village. We are the only inhabitants of the Nautilus sea snail, colonists from the earth country of Samoa. 
we took Fa'a Samoa, the Samoan way of life with us and started anew 50 years ago under the sea of the planet Atua to relieve overcrowding on earth and return to our roots. I like the world building here a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm getting like this like avatar type setting feeling. Or Moana because yeah. that was <laughs> Samoan. <laughs> I know that's like basic bitch um cuz Disney. But um oh, my cat just moved my camera. Thank you cat. Um I I get also like a there's like a rhythm to the words yeah. that I I really liked. It it I liked reading it out loud. I liked the way that it kind of felt in my mouth. Um, it feels like an oral story. Yes. Mm. And it feels lush, which is always really good when you're writing genre fiction. Oh, Laura is in the chat and she said it's, it's Moana meets Star Trek. Oh, I love it. Okay, uh, I nailed one of those comps. I'm really yeah. proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Yeah, well, those are honestly, good a good first page does do that. Um, a reader should go, this feels like this. Mm -hmm. They should feel the author's intention yeah i like i feel all the colors from this first page yeah oh god it's so pretty and that's the thing like i i could picture it um i want to know more as well you guys submitted some very good first pages mm -hmm. <laughs> good job well and i'm also curious it's why paranormal sci-fi i'm curious what the paranormal part is mm. hmm yeah me too it's kind of like, we probably should have asked you to send queries because that would really replicate the agent experience where you you do kind of know what the book is about. But You might have said in the email, but I just copied the chapter for the, yeah. for the live show. Um, right. Laura says that she can see ghosts. Ooh, see, and that makes sense because there's so much that's important with ancestry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. Sorry, my cat's tail keeps hitting my mouse, so... Y'all should take next steps because I can't use it right now. <laughs> Ooh, spirit creatures, nice. Okay, cool. I like that. Yeah. And it reminded and it, me yeah. a bit of uh, Heather Kaczynski's duology, just like um, possibly for a comp title. Her second book, One uh, Giant Leap, ha like had some of this kind of sci-fi-y like biology stuff. So I like that a lot. Yeah, biology. That's like a good... That's a good description of this, I feel like. It felt it felt eco. Yeah. Eco yeah. Like I got the supernovas and the constellations, but we also yeah. got like the I algae. Like a lot for algae yeah. and the bioluminescence. Yeah. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Like it's sci fi, yeah. but it feels very grounded. Yeah. Yeah, very grounded. Nature. Soil. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, my only thing is, I want to know more about the main character. Yeah. Because, like, I, I can see that a lot of like atmosphere and what's going on in the world, um, but we don't know much about our narrator. So this could be a case where that's going to hit us on page two. Yeah, yeah. Which is another disadvantage but of first pages, it's, you know. It's difficult because like you obviously can't do everything in the first. Yeah. Page. Well, and actually, really, even like the Hunger Games, you you know about. Katniss in an abstract, like you know about her, her, some of her negative character traits, and you get a hint, but you don't actually learn much about her until later. Yeah. So, um, this is just kind of—I know it's a subjective thing, but um, I'm curious what you guys kind of like with world building. I like that we have these like abstract kind of words, like this. I don't really know what that is, but I'm going with it. You know, yeah. like I kind of like to discover those things while I'm reading, so I don't need to know what any. I of don't this need. Means. I agree. Yes. I don't like yeah. stuff like that being spoon fed to me personally. Right. Mm -hmm. But I know some people like that, but mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I, I like, I, I just assume that the author is going to reveal these things to me eventually. Yeah. So I kind of like put my trust in the author to reveal those things when they should be. Well, and even like the, the last paragraph said Samoa, but I hit the first word and I was like, oh, I think this is Pacific Islander in some way. Like you you should trust your reader to kind of get a sense. But in fairness, I'm probably more familiar with that stuff than the average person just because of my day job. So maybe I'm weird. It is nice yeah, to- I like it. the mention of Samoa because it, it is contrasted with, you know, like we left overcrowding on earth. Yeah. Oh no, it's, it's well done, but you know. Yeah. 
it's it's I already had a sense and that's that's what should be happening. Right. Oh right. Why don't we do one of ours? <laughs> this is terrifying, except <laughs> not really. I'm kind of but the thing is I've already had my band-aid ripped off. Like what yeah, thousands of people out there have in the world judged your work? It's like, do I even care? Whatever. I can't change it. It's fine. Whatever. I like so I have brightly burning in the in the links file. I don't it's a fine first page. I don't even think it's that. It's fine. It's like Okay. I actually think the first page of my second book is better. Oh, so. I'm sorry. Have that open. There we go. Which I do have. We don't have to do more than one of mine. We can do the new one. Maybe that's more what, exciting. What do you want to do? We can do the stars we steal. Okay. Just because it's 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 new. It's new. <laughs> So just so you know, for those who don't know, the first page of Brightly Burning, it's basically just like, hey, we're in space. This is a character. <laughs> <It's> in space. <laughs> All right. So this is the first page of my second book. Um, I I guess I'll read it because it's mine. Right? <laughs> yeah. I guess. Probably. Yeah, you can probably read it. Yeah. Um, I did. I'm going to tell you, I did cheat a little. So I have only because it cuts off in a weird place. And this is actually something... This happens to be the like literal first page of the book plus a little extra. When you send it to an agent, it's usually like you can cut it off at a more ideal point. So what I put here is what I would have sent to an agent if I was sending them the, this first page so that it cuts off at a better point, which is actually the second line on the second page. Okay, so the extravagance made my teeth hurt. Fractures of light bounced off diamonds set into tiaras and other baubles that were as impractical as the silk frocks and dress jackets swimming about the room. Champagne flutes and vodka shots flew by on trays lofted high by servants dressed down in simple black bodysuits, casting the party goers into, into even more ridiculous relief. This wasn't an imperial ballroom in a great royal palace in Sweden. It was just modeled to look like one. The aim was to forget where we were and why. Everyone else accomplished that beautifully. I retreated further into, oh, <laughs> see, in the actual copy, it, it is correct. So that should say, a gold gilded archway I'd made my temporary home, shuddering to think about the cold vacuum of space that hung ominous beyond the confines of this cushy spaceship. A woman in an extravagantly tiered and pooped ball gown waltzed past me as she let out a high-pitched and exuberant laugh. Pain shot through my jaw. Unclench your teeth, Leo, I scolded myself. I glanced down at my name tag, at the name tag on my chest and felt everything go tight again. All the champagne and dancing in the world couldn't erase the reason I was here, why I was hiding in the back corner of a ludicrous ballroom in the center of a ludicrous spaceship. Tonight was the official start of, uh, tonight was the start of the official Valg season, a barbaric courtship ritual we engaged in every five years so the rich would avoid marrying their cousins. I like that last line. Yeah. If I, if I actually, the place that actually cut off the technical end of the first page ended on uh, all the champagne and dancing in the world couldn't erase the reason I was here, why I was hiding in the back corner of the ludicrous ballroom and ludicrous spaceship. But I'm like, I, I like a good cousin's joke, a good incest joke. So, yeah. <laughs> Plus, it, it, that's basically like that last line is the promise of the premise. It's like, that's yeah, literally like the that sets it up exactly. That's mm -hmm. where meets Jane Austen in space. Like you can instantly tell that from this first page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To make you feel better about that typo, um, I copied and pasted from my last Word document, turned in, which was before copy edits and past pages. It is correct in the arc. So, <laughs> this is why editors matter. <laughs> they're, they're good at their jobs. It's fine. Yeah. Well, I love all of the, there's definitely, cause well, your first line, obviously the extravagance and then the following paragraphs are all about extravagance. So that's what I really like about it. Yeah, I really like adverbs and adjectives. You can pry them from my cold dead hands. So <laughs> it's fine. My, my editor did want me to cut some of this and I was like, nah, <laughs> it's, it's meant to be over the top. Yeah, uh, so my my lovely copy editor. I had used the word ridiculous too much, and she's the one who suggested ludicrous instead, which I thought was a wonderful suggestion. So we did that. 
Love the incest joke. Yeah, it's also very Austin, where people legit marry their first cousins. So <laughs> is that me throwing shade on the Regency period? A little, so yeah. It is basically a Regency romance in space, so. But no one marries their cousin. Incest is bad, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to say. No, 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 it's cool. <laughs> I just thought it'd be fun if we right. yeah. like, put ourselves out there. I feel like it's just only fair. Mm -hmm. um, but all but also this is a party and you know I love parties and that was definitely a conscious choice. I was like, where would I start this? And the, the party is basically like the sharp relief of, and it is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It is ridiculous in a post-apocalyptic scenario to live on a swanky ass spaceship where they throw huge parties while people starve. Yay. And you got, you got your dress fun. porn in there too. Sorry? You got your dress porn in there too. I did. Oh, I have <laughs> the dress. It's described like, uh, I think it's on page two. I love it. It's a cornflower blue ball gown, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's this paragraph here. I love it. And then if you'd kept going, so really the first two pages, I literally describe what she looks like, but in a clever way. Boom. Or what she's like her background details. So artful exposition, friends. Have your character wear a name tag. <laughs> right. <laughs> it makes sense in a mixer though. Mm -hmm. so. All right. What do we want to do next? Should we do another critique? Sure. And then we'll do another one. We'll do one of yours. Okay. It's <laughs> adorable. Okay. All right. Shall we do PL Fields? Oh, I just opened up Chen. Chen okay. And Chen well, actually, this is fitting because of Jane Austen. Because uh, so, the title of this one is Pride and Prejudice with a Side of Rice, which I think is an adorable title mm -hmm. okay so i put the pronunciation guy just because i know i probably would mess that up so okay. am i reading i guess i'm reading this then mm, sure okay um hold on one second okay wife wealth is was i echoing yeah you are Oh crap. Technical I difficulties. I don't think I am anymore. No, nope, I don't. Hi, Chen, we're it. excited. I really love your title. Okay. So, wife, wealth, children, and pay are all predestined. This, according to the book of ancient proverbs, my Baba gifted to my sisters and me last Chinese New Year, but I'd rather have the red envelopes filled with cash. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the outdated. <laughs> Yeah. The outdated saying should have gone the way of the dodo bird and the baji dolphin, but it was very much alive and well fixed in the minds of the many Chinese mothers bent on finding spouses for their children. These mothers were like scavengers with a perm as they fought amongst themselves for the best piece of meat, even if they knew very little of its feelings or desires. This included my own mother, who was not afraid of throwing elbows, pulling hair, and biting ankles. Imagine a vulture in gold jewelry the gaudier the better, and you have my mama. The proverb shouldn't apply to my Chinese American family since there were far too many daughters, five to be exact, and no sons to carry on the Ben name, family name. But that didn't stop mama from pursuing it from a different angle. She wanted us to be the wife in the marriage equation. In the scavenger hunt for husbands, mama was determined to come out on top with five son-in-laws in her predicted claws, in her pedicured claws, preferably rich, handsome, and Chinese. That was why we were currently on another dim sum date with another prospective husband and his parents sitting across from us. I wanted to gag on my bowl of rice. Okay, hi, I love this. I want to read this novel. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, this is great. There's so much um, like establishment of the character's family and culture and the voice is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the Pride and Prejudice retelling, the fresh Pride and Prejudice retelling we didn't know we needed. Like when people say you can retell something that's been done a million times, as long as you bring a fresh angle, this is it. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I love the I love the details. 
like the the red envelopes and and the dim sum. I like imagine a vulture and gold jewelry. Yes, that that was the best line of of the of the opening page. That is I mean, Chinese American Mrs. Bennett, like right. Yeah. <laughs> But it's also very voicey. Like I can already yeah. really get the idea of your main character, even though we don't really know who your main character is yet. I feel like I kind of get their vibe here. My only note that I imagine comes like on the next page. So it doesn't like really need to be on the first page. But like, I guess my only thought is I just wonder where this is set. Like where in the US, like are they in Chinatown in San Francisco or LA? Like it doesn't really matter. I'm just curious, so. But I'm sure it comes like right after this um, to give it a, a greater sense of place. I mean, so yeah. Seriously, is this done? Are you querying it? Like, I have so many ideas of who you should send this to, <laughs> including my agent. So hi. <laughs> yeah. Or you can enter AMM if I ever figure out when there's another round. I don't know. It's fine. I also like how we um, this paragraph here about like the daughters and. Yeah, I just think I already know about their family now and I know their dynamics. I want to know more of it. Yeah. I mean, I'm just excited to see more of Pride and Prejudice transposed into like a Chinese American modern setting. I'm, I'm just like already delighted by all the ways in which this, this can be done. Yeah. All right, well, keep writing, Chen, and then maybe i'll do author mentor match either way query my agent okay <laughs> she loves retellings like she loves retellings so yeah if you wanted to know that about my agent a weird number of her ya titles are retellings mm. so um which is why i'm there uh let's do one of yours okay probably mine since laney just read red yeah that's true poor laney Oh, Billy, <laughs> nice. So I'm going to be reading the first page of Storyteller, um, which has already been put on Wattpad. So like the whole first chapter is on Wattpad. If you guys are like, mm, I don't know, want to read more. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's still up on Wattpad. Okay. I haven't read this in a while. Let's see what's going on here. <laughs> <clears throat> Chapter one, in which I prepare for NaNoWriMo. A sudden pounding at my door jerked me from the thought I was pacing. I blink at the cursor and struggle to recapture what I'd been about to type, willing my mind to latch back onto that runaway idea. It was something important to the plot of my novel, but it's gone now. I breathe out, clenching my hands into fists above my keyboard. What, what is it? Sarah, my roommate Liz, calls through the door. I'm taking off now. I wanted to say goodbye. Okay, bye. There's a pause then. Can I open the door? Yeah, I say through a sigh. All right. The door swings open and I can't stop myself from snickering. Liz is all decked out in her Halloween costume. Slutty Glinda the Good Witch. Or maybe she's slutty Princess Peach. Either way, her long blonde hair spills and curls beneath a tiara and she's wearing lingerie the color of cotton candy. And is she ever sparkling? It's like she raided a first grade classroom's craft supply closet and took them for all they were worth in glitter. Don't laugh, she puts her hands on her hips. Every movement she makes sends glitter floating to the floor. Do you have any idea how long it took me to get ready? Sorry, I'm sorry, you're just so shiny. I wasn't expecting it. If only I could say I wasn't expecting this, she says as she gives me a once over. Her eyes trail from my fuzzy pink slippers to my green pajama pants my hair piled into a messy knot on top of my head. Come on, it's Halloween. I can't believe you won't go out with me tonight. I have things to do, I remind her, glancing at the time. It's just past nine o'clock, which means there are less than three hours to go. For me, it's not Halloween that's important. It's the day after. On November 1st, National Novel Writing Month begins, and I will have 30 days to write 50,000 words. I can do it. This year, I will do it. You First could be like an audio, an audio like story. Like you, I just, you have a really good voice. <laughs> <laughs> I love slutty when the bigger witch. <laughs> slutty princess, princess Peach. Like I saw it immediately, and I was like, mm -hmm. mm. and it really sets the scene. Yeah, I like this. Well, and and, and especially 
contrast because you're it's so true like any of us who have done nano on halloween night we're not thinking about halloween so it's a right. perfect again like choosing the right scene that kind of casts into relief all of the things about your premise this is a great example of that as well mm -hmm. and i just felt really called out because these are the <laughs> exact kind of feelings that i have before i start <laughs> Oh, and I definitely never did a slutty Halloween costume and left the house, whether I was doing NaNoWriMo or not. I'm a home kid. I'm a I'm a I'm a indoor kid, indoors kid. So, mm -hmm. <sighs> uh, just confirming first page is about 250 words. Correct. Yes, because um, you're going by Microsoft Word, and it your first page start halfway down the page or or like a a third. Um, why don't we do the last submission and then Lainey, yours or another pub, maybe a published book one and then yours? Um, I mean, I can go after, I can go after the next critique one because you're going to read the next one probably then. And then my turn. Sure. I can do my own. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is why paranormal romance. Okay, um, and I can pull up the title because I, I like knowing the titles of things. I think they tell you a lot. So this one is called In Sunshine and In Shadow. Okay. Poe's honey gold glaze held on an imperfection between the salmon colored brick and the blindingly clear entrance windows of the movie theater. At just over five feet, she had to stand on tiptoe to see past the glass into the scorching asphalt of the parking lot. The midday July sun reigned dominant in the pale blue sky. The fan above her sent wind rustling through Poe's wavy brown hair and did little else to combat the heat inside the lobby. The combination of sun and salmon brought tears to her eyes. It had nothing to do with the fact that her ex-boyfriend wouldn't stop sending her texts while she avoided him the only way she knew how, by working. Aiden, you there? Aiden, let's talk. Aiden, you have to forgive me. Poe, why should I, Aiden? Because you love me. Poe sighed and allowed herself an eye roll at his expense. How should she respond? She'd said she would loved him and meant it, but what good did her love do their relationship if Aiden couldn't stay faithful? She gripped her phone with vice-like hands, wishing for the strength to tell him off for good or crush her phone to bits so she would rid herself of the temptation to forgive. Such a big sigh for a pint-sized girl. Poe's shriek echoed off the high ceiling as she jumped to her feet. Everyone in the lobby turned to stare, busted. Blood rushed into her olive-toned cheeks. Diane, I... That's worth <laughs> <laughs> Well, now I know it's Diane, but my first thought before I got to the end is, who is it? What's going on? <laughs> um, well, go ahead, Lainey. I, well, first I'm going to say I really like the name Poe for a girl. That's just, yeah. that's really cute. And I also, do, if, does she work at the movie theater, I'm, I guess? That's what I'm yeah, assuming. Yeah, I think so. I Which really I gonna like say. that if that's yeah. like a major thing in the story. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's like, like, you know, like how like people do like adventure land type of summer books. Yeah. I don't know. I really like that for like a movie theater setting. If that's. No. Same. That was exactly what my thought was. I like that as a very specific teen job setting. Mm. Um, it could, if it plays a major role, that could be really interesting. I mean, even if it doesn't, it's still some nice color that's mm -hmm. making you feel grounded in a YA sense. Like it's, it's of course, it's a place that a teenager would work. I like that. Yeah, I also yeah. like the immediate conflict of, mm -hmm. you know, her relationship with the boyfriend and how he's like, you have to forgive me. And she's finding the temptation to forgive him. Uh, the only thing that I have a, a small question about is if it's a paranormal romance, there's not really any hint of anything paranormal in this opening. I think, I don't know if one of you guys have the email open. I think there's vampires in this. Oh, oh what? Excuse me? Excuse yeah. me? Hold on. <laughs> go, yeah, go verify that. But that's, that's what exciting. I think. I think that's what I was reading. Oh, it's a dual point of view why a paranormal romance. So just knowing that, and, and an agent would know that from the query, I want to know who the other POV is for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Because I'm like already annoyed with Aiden because if he cheated on her, I'm done. <laughs> He's a dick. Yeah, I'm already written, writing him off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, she cheated with her best friend. <gasps> yeah, that's not cool. Oh, and Emily works at the movie theater? Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, oh, so she's training the hot but irritating new guy. So that's probably the other POV. Mm. Oh, no. Actually, it says, everything about her life sucks and her only shining light is the handsome, funny, and all-around awesome Xander who frequents the theater as a customer. He, he's a vampire. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So it's, like it's a vampire book. <laughs> I, like, I like the movie theater. And I'm also assuming... Like, uh, this is my assumption. I always go small town mm. when I think of like, oh, yeah. someone's job is in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. And that's like the hangout spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I love that. I love I love books that have that kind of character. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, like, that's what I've really missed about paranormal romance and urban fantasy. And I think everyone has, which is why I think it's finally come back. Um, that like slice of life, hyper specific, not always small town, but they often are small towns, but like, I don't, I like, I like those kinds of books when we haven't had those in such a long time, like grounded reality with a twist teen books. Yeah. All right. So there you go. And, and that's the thing, like an agent would be primed already to know that there are vampires, but I'd say that I think it's a real challenge with the paranormal because you always want to start like before everything changes, it's challenging to, I keep knocking over my mic, to get that paranormal on page one. So I completely sympathize. I, it's not easy. And so I don't have a good suggestion. Yeah, no, totally. my, mine wasn't a critique of like, you have, yeah. to have a vampire, like, cause you gotta have it on the page one. Um, just a sort of a question of like genre expectations. Yeah. And stuff. yeah I'm, I'm almost wondering, and this is something that obviously would be revealed right later on, but I'm wondering of like, what kind of paranormal, like, is it a secret I get like to the no. outside world or is it something that's kind of talked about? Is it, you know? I I mean, yeah, I that's actually a really good question. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, if it is a known thing, that is something you can work into page one. Yeah. It's harder to do if it's a secret. Right, yeah. Although one suggestion, this is just like a color thing and it might be later in the first chapter, like you could always do like almost like a wry wink kind of thing. Like maybe the movie at the movie theater that's playing is a vampire movie. Or like and another like, vampire movie. You like, put it on like a joke. Put yeah. it in Twilight. We all love that. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Well, like that's what I would, I would do. Twilight doesn't have any reference of paranormal for the first oh, first chapter like she doesn't find out edward's a vampire until like page 100 <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, that's very common with paranormal which is there's a whole other thing like a conversation about pacing in paranormal books any book where you discover a secret world is tough because you have to start out when things are normal yeah okay um laney do you want to do yours yeah i guess <laughs> And then, and then, how about after yours, we'll do uh, the two other pubbed books, and then we'll wrap up. Sounds okay, good. sounds good. Okay, y'all, this is my pirate book. Hold on, let me take a drink. <laughs> yeah, of, of water, <laughs> not vodka. Okay, no, it's water. <laughs> Okay. Oh, and actually, I should say, before we wrap up, we did have questions at the very top about first lines. So what we can talk about those, maybe with the next two, the published book examples, we'll talk about first lines. Okay. <clears throat> the sea was the safest place for those who indulged in witchcraft and piracy. Port Jonah Island was the second. Or at least it used to be. Galena Windermere thought as the setting sun bathed six hanging bodies in an orange hue before her. Back and forth, they swayed in the island breeze, their bloated bodies sunburned. They hung, surrounded by a buzzing swarm of flies in the town square as a message for Port Jonah's returning pirates. Each of the bodies had a wooden plaque hanging around their necks. Hastily written words were splashed in white paint across the wood. Pirate, pirate, witch, pirate, pirate, witch. The second pirate hanging was crew on the vile pride, her ship, home, 
Bram had a simple fever that prevented him from joining the crew on the last raid they left for two weeks prior. The simple fever had killed him in the end. Staying back had been a mistake. Beside her, Micah Ripken huffed in anger, the gold rings in her braids jingling against each other as she shook her head. She made a move to step forward through the crowded onlookers, but Galena grabbed her best friend by the wrist. If we try and claim him, they'll arrest us too. The warning in her tone was betrayed by the fear. Watchmen and counsel to this king of Tansuria had finally come to clean up the cluster of islands known as the Tansurian ter territories. Captain Ripken had said it would happen, but Galena hadn't realized how soon. I'd like to see them try, Micah whispered angrily, but Galena glared back. I mean, I'm creeped out, thanks. <laughs> I love that on page one of a book. No, but seriously, I do. <laughs> yeah, and I will say that this was not at all what the first chapter used to be. Um, um, can you talk about that? Because we haven't even talked about the genesis of first pages that you don't always nail it on the first go. Sometimes yeah. you arrive at it in an edit. Um, yeah, so the first chapter actually was the two of them drinking, at, doing a drinking game in a tavern. Um, and... Yeah, what do you say? I, I love. It. Oh, I just like that. Oh, hey. yeah, I, I have. I did end up working it in somewhere else in the draft, but that was like the opening, them being like I don't know, crazy teenagers. But then, um, I realized that there was it wasn't high stakes enough, and my whole first act was took too long to get to like the actual meat of the story, so. I don't even know how this first chapter like came to me. It was just like, I need something where the conflict is pretty clear right away. And this is what well, I thought needed to happen. Building. It mm -hmm. makes it really clear, like what happens <laughs> to pirates <laughs> in your world. Yeah. Well, and it also indicates that witches are, are out or at least that the concept of witchcraft is a thing. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think that's what you killed. <laughs> so yeah, this is actually the chapter or like the what I when I submitted to AMM, this was more or less the chapter which I submitted. So yeah. mm -hmm. well that's good, Lainey. Everyone's good. Kat, was yours the original opening to Storyteller? Uh more or less. Uh that's because of the premise of Storyteller, which is uh, a girl aspiring author working on her novel. Uh, falls asleep, wakes up in her novel, and her characters are going off plot, and she has to like wrangle them and keep the story on track. Um, the first chapter has always been sort of like the, the bookend beginning of that, of like, yeah. meet her, she's getting ready to start writing, she starts writing, and then like chapter two is when she wakes up in the fantasy world. So like, that first chapter has never really changed, it's always been just like how the story is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and sometimes the beginnings, they, they come to you and they crystallize and they never change. And sometimes they change. Um, my beginnings never change mm -hmm. uh, so far, knock on wood. Um, so except, I mean, they always change, but mine haven't changed fundamentally. So like the stars we steal that first page, um, I used to, there was a little more description of kind of the ballroom and stuff. And I, I, didn't previously call out that she was clenching her jaw. That was a note from my editor so that the first line had greater context. Um, and some of the writing was just more foofy. Like I just made it better, more concise. Um, and I got to the Valg faster. That was the other edit to the first couple of pages that like I had a lot of navel gazing and my editor was like, get to the point. So I did a lot of line edits on chapter one, but the the first like opening image never changed really. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Um, first lines. Do we want to talk about first lines? Because someone asked at the beginning of the chat, um, Hera. It's always nice to give credit where credit is due. Tanya asked, "How much kind of weight should you put on your first line? Um, they matter and they don't matter." If you have a first line that's really, really good, yeah, you can become famous for it. Like it can be a famous first line, like Pride and Prejudice or whatever. Mm. Um, but most books don't have that. So I say don't stress out too much about having a perfect first line, but they kind of matter. What do you guys think? Yeah, <laughs> they kind of matter. Like you don't 
want a first line that is an immediate turnoff. Like the goal of the first line is to get them to read the next line. Mm -hmm. And a very catchy, like snappy one-liner can absolutely do that. But I, I would say you don't need to put that much weight and emphasis on it as long as you don't open with like a long rambly sentence that like people get confused reading and they're just like, I can't do this. Yeah, I agree. I, I sometimes I do like like the hook. I'm like, oh, that's a first good. That's a good first line. Yeah. But a bad first line doesn't prevent me from keep from continuing on reading. Yeah, and, and I also wouldn't even call it a bad first line. I think there's no middle ground. I think you either have a mundane, ordinary first line that's fine, that serves the first paragraph, or you have an amazing zinger that really pulls people in, but there's very little in between, and a mundane first line is fine, especially if it supports, I mean, it's not it's not always first line. It's first line that leads to second line that leads to third line that creates a great first paragraph if that's what you're writing. So I personally do do at least the stars we steal and my wife thriller have first line zingers. But the stars we steal, the first line's completely mundane. It's just the gravity stabilizers were failing again. And it feeds into a first paragraph about what's going on. It's nothing special. It's just scene setting. And that's fine too. I mean, that's that's so. what it is for a storyteller. Um, yeah. You know, it's just she, what is it like? A, a knock startles her at the door from what she was writing. So it's just about like setting our character in a place in yeah. action, like giving you just as much information about what is happening as soon as possible. So it can just perform a function essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Chen, I love that. That's a real proverb. I honestly thought you made that up. I'm really proud. <laughs> like, and impressed. The, the proverb that starts Chen's page is real, but it's also just like Pride and Prejudice. Interesting how all that works out. <laughs> um, let's jump into, why don't we look at Divergent? Okay. Because I think this has a very good first line uh, and it's also a good first page. Um, Hold on, let me share the screen again. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, that's why I see, saw your face again. I, yeah, I, I didn't no, want to see, like, talk about <laughs> first lines about people seeing us. Okay. And also just another thing to say about first lines. I personally, I really like pithy one-liners. So meaning um, declarative statements is actually how, how I should put it, which is how Divergent opens. I do think it's a good way to go if it fits your story. Yeah. So um, I can read this if you want, since I'm into it. Uh, so the first line of Divergent is, there is one mirror in my house. And what I like about that is you're yeah. like, why? That's kind of random. And then you mm -hmm. keep reading, reading. It is behind a sliding panel in the hallway upstairs. Our faction allows me to stand in front of it on the second day of every third month, the day my mother cuts my hair. That is so weird. Like meaning that first paragraph, it's like immediate, you're like WTF, what is this mm -hmm. world? I, I think it's a great first paragraph. And so it, it feeds into this opening image of the first page. I sit on the stool and my mother stands behind me with the scissors trimming. The strands fall on the floor in a dull blonde ring. When she finishes, she pulls my hair away from my face and twists it into a knot. I note how calm she looks and how focused she is. She is well practiced in the art of losing herself. I can't say the same for myself. I sneak a look at my reflection when she isn't paying attention, not for the sake of vanity, but out of curiosity. A lot can happen to a person's appearance in three months. I love this first page. Yeah, it's a pretty good first page. It's a great first page. <laughs> and I think it's a great example. Like, we don't know the editorial situation with this book, except I'm sure this was immaculately edited, this book. Mm -hmm. um, and generally, I find Divergent to be very well written. And what I love about this first page is, yeah, it has, I think someone said calming tone, or maybe I made that up, because I find that it's both calming and a little bit haunting, almost. It's, yeah, it's a little bit unsettling. It's unsettling. Well, and especially because you're like, this is so unlike what how we would think about something just the idea that you would only look at yourself once every three months mm -hmm. that you would just describe your hair as dull um 
the art of losing yourself it's all hinting at like this this person this is odd this is weird and it it hints at abnegation mm -hmm. um, what's especially interesting about this is that it is exactly what so many newbie writers are told about like not to don't start your book with the character looking in a mirror you yep know, that's a cliche <laughs> of like the character like i look in the mirror and then like they describe themselves and this is such an amazing sort of sub yep. subversion of that because yep. the character looking in the mirror, but they're not really describing themselves. They're talking yep. about like how weird yep. it is that they only see themselves in a mirror once every three months. It's yep. And they're not allowed to look at themselves. Yeah, yes. yeah. It, it adds so much to it, but mm -hmm. it starts with character describing themselves in the mirror, which is like the huge, yeah. like, don't like do that. Second. Yeah, because the very next paragraph, she's yeah. describing how yeah. she looks. Which is, is a is a choice but the first <laughs> thing, um yeah. but also we know having read divergent what i also like about this opening image is her relationship with her mother is very important it's it's kind of the linchpin of the novel it, it's the the heart of it and so i i just love the opening image of the mother doing her daughter's hair and the comparison i think that's something very universal that many of us can relate to um and i just i like the image of it Though what's funny is I thought she was braiding her hair. Was that in the movie? Like, why did I think she was braiding her hair? It's funny what stays with us and what we decide is on a first page that is not on a first page. So it's the Mandela effect. Yes. <laughs> Bear Steen Bears. All right. And then the last one that I pulled up just because I thought it was interesting was Thug. Because I like this as a first page because like imagine getting this in your aquarium box. And I think it, I think it does a lot of good work. Um, I actually think this is a really good example of, it's really technically a mundane first line, but what makes it special is what comes after that. Mm. The specificity of what comes after it. So um, Kat or Lainey, do you want to read it? I, I mean, I can if, if you, you want. want. Yeah. Or, yeah. I don't care. Um, I shouldn't have come to this party. I'm not even sure I belong at this party. There's not on, oh, that's not on some bougie shit either. There are just some places where it's not enough to be me, either version of me. Big D's spring break party is one of those places. I squeeze through sweaty bodies and follow Kenya, her curls bouncing past her shoulders. A haze lingers over the room, smelling like weed, and music rattles the floor. Some rapper calls out for everybody to nay nay, followed by a bunch of haze at people launch into their own versions. Kenya holds her Kenya holds up her cup and dances her way through the crowd. Between the headache from the loud ass music and the nausea from the weed odor, I'll be amazed if I cross the room without spilling my drink. So, I mean, I, I like this. Well, you know, I like parties. So to be fair, yeah. <laughs> um, what I like is you already have a really strong hint of a character who feels like she doesn't belong out of step with her surroundings, which I, I just, it's, and it's also just very specific. It has voice. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a great example of a good contemporary first page where this is just a moment in a, a, a teenage YA snapshot, but it's also specific. Mm. I mean, it does like, everything. Why does she belong at this party? It does everything a first page should. You know, it introduces yeah. our, our character in a voice. It mm -hmm. introduces the setting. We have th this great imagery of the party. We know exactly right. what's going on. And it introduces the conflict of like, she doesn't belong there. So why, why not? Like, what is it about this party? What's going on? Yeah, it's also, I like, um, specifically like this paragraph where it talks about like i feel very grounded in what this party is like yes. I don't know, i've been to this kind of party so like i just like yeah I immediately can visual can visualize everything going on I like that and i also like right in the second paragraph some very specific voice that's not on some bougie shit either is that mm. is so unexpected and you immediately know this is a character with a unique voice mm. Mm. This isn't going to be, this isn't just like cute white girl moves to small town and it's a party. Like this book has something to say. Yeah. I think it's and, an example of hyper specific 
authorial voice. Yeah, I also think like even like there are some places where it's not enough to be me either version of me already yeah. give us a lot of character conflict. Yep. Yeah, to and then that immediately tells us mm -hmm. like it's the theme of the book. Of her. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I just I really like this first page and I was like, hey, all the other first pages are genre. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I think actually contemporary is when when you can feel very trapped by mundane openings because it's high school, um, but you can still make very specific choices that make a reader feel like they're there and and make get them interested in following the story. Yeah. Do we have any other thoughts on first pages, first lines? Um, those in the live chat, did you like this? Should we do more? stuff like this, we could do query critiques, um, though we should mention, so Google YouTube has decided to do away with Hangouts on air, multi-person chats. Um, a lot of people are kind of in flux, a lot of things are up in the air, so we're still figuring out what that means for the live shows on YouTube. Obviously, we will continue to do our podcast. Um, We've been releasing the podcast more regularly. Uh, we know we had a huge gap between live shows. Um, I had some personal stuff come up where I just couldn't record um, live. But uh, so the podcast is still releasing regularly. Uh, maybe the next, the thing is, I feel like the live reviews are better on video and that's what makes mm -hmm. me so sad. I was about to say we could do it on the podcast. I don't think it's as fun. No, we have to do the no. screen share. Yeah, I don't know, with Hangouts going away, uh, a lot of people on booktube author tube youtube right now are trying to figure out like what we're going to do about live shows being different it's not that they're going away you can still individually broadcast yeah. but they're making group, it, they're taking away the half parts like we can't do this how we've been doing yeah. um, and we can't figure out an alternative until after august 1st when this change happens yeah honestly we kind of want to see what other people do yeah, I have to figure out what to do for other people. <laughs> <laughs> other people. I don't know. We'll mm -hmm. see. But yeah, yeah, we just wanted to let you know so that, you know, that basically means that we aren't um, totally sure when we're going to do our next live show because uh, the change is coming August 1st. Yeah. Uh, but we will keep you guys updated on Patreon and Twitter and whatnot. And uh, the podcast we have an episode recorded that should be going up next week-ish. It's gonna be a good one. It's all about research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You think that'd be dry, but we had a really good time talking about it. So we think you're gonna like it. Yeah. Yeah, so we've thought about Skype. Um, Elaine suggested Skype. If we do Skype, we'll have to pre-record things and cut them together to put on YouTube. So that's kind of where the, the, the thing is, is that Hangouts made it easy to live stream. Um, and we can chat amongst each other on Skype and record it, but then we'd have to cut it together, um, just like any pre-filmed video, which then it wouldn't be live. That's really sad. So yeah, we're, we're gonna look into other options um, and we'll figure something out. Yeah, we will. Thanks, YouTube. Well, I'm half convinced that they have some other product launching that's going to replace yeah. it. And this is all kind of like, I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So thank you for joining us. Um, we had a really yep. good time reviewing your pages, talking about first pages, putting our, our own first pages out there for you to judge. <laughs> Yeah, thank you to uh, all of our Patreons who submitted pages for yes. us to critique. We're all really and, talented. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. we have some good Patreons there. Yeah, yeah seriously, yeah. I'm deeply impressed. Because like sometimes you see these these first page impressions that the agents do, and it, it is actually a, a mixed bag that shows a full spectrum of pages, but all of our pages were good. So yeah, yay, good job. Keep going. I, I think part of that is like. <laughs> the people who follow us are also, you know, they're interested in craft and they're working hard on their own. So I'm not mm -hmm. that surprised. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, so as we mentioned, we have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash novelty show. We have a little community. We put up polls and you can ask questions that we include on our podcasts. Um, we have our podcast. Our next episode will be out soon. 
Um, follow us on Twitter. That's really the best place to get updates from us, Novelty Show. Um, anything I'm I'm leaving out? I think that's that's it. That should be good. Yeah. I think that's it. Yep. So yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.